hello everyone. This is Coach Jackie Zach, and I'm excited to have Tony Kusabucky uh, here with me today. He's the founder and former CEO of Federation Financial and currently the head of strategic partnerships for Receive. I'm so happy to have you today. Uh, he is also in the process, which I thought was really interesting, of moving to a hobby farm in central Wisconsin. He and his wife enjoy gardening as a hobby, but I uh, this is going to be a whole new adventure for you, and I'm really looking forward to hearing a little bit more about that. In your downtime, in his downtime, he is a recovering home brewer. And you know how cool is it that you've won some awards in Wisconsin, Illinois, and Washington D.C. But you know it does become an expensive hobby. Uh, but I think that is awesome. And then, and you are an avid reader. He is most proud of graduating with his MBA from Marquette University in 2021. During those two years, he managed to juggle a 50-hour work week. The 50 hours plus school plus the pandemic and and a an arrival of your daughter which is so awesome and you you I love how you said this you owe much of your of the, your success to your wife and proud to have seen those two crazy years through to the end it is my pleasure to welcome Tony Kosabucky to the show today hello Tony hey Jackie great to see you and thanks for having me on Sure, my pleasure. So let's just get right into it. So tell us a little bit about your personal story. Yeah, personal story. Uh, grew up in a small town, uh, central Wisconsin, a little town called Amherst, actually. Um, uh, currently down in the Milwaukee area. And uh, let's see, we've been down here for about 10 years. Um, and you alluded to it, but we're in the process of relocating. Uh, so I have a three-year-old daughter at home, and uh, she's my pride and joy, um, but we're we're looking. I also have two cats. One of them is saying hi now. Um, <laughs> yeah, looking forward to uh, uh, getting out of town again and uh, hopefully kind of giving her the um, type of childhood I had. Um, so, yeah, we're very, very much excited. Uh, we're in the middle of another crazy month, and that's kind of a recurring theme <laughs> for me. <laughs> <last> <laughs> uh, fabulous. So tell me, what's a funny story that you're willing to share that your family tells about you? <laughs> um, well, I'm not sure I'm totally willing to share, Jackie, but I can tell you that it involves a country music festival, probably too many drinks, a malfunctioning camp stove, uh, and undercooked brats. I'll let you kind of fill in the rest of the story. <laughs> that sounds fascinating and i i can sort of picture all that in my head so there you go and so and i assume it's a recurring theme at holidays and when anytime you get together right i'm never gonna live that one down <laughs> and i don't blame you because if you were my sibling i'd probably tease you about it too so tell us a story about how much how the business came about and at what point you had the confidence to that you could run your own business yeah, so how it came about, well, I, I spent the first 10 years or so of my career um, in corporate America, and I, I think, honestly, a lot of great opportunities, a lot of learning. Um, the corporate game is a wonderful fit for a lot of people, um, but I was having a hard time kind of deriving meaning from it. Um, and during that time, I also realized, you know, a lot of these Fortune 500s, they're not necessarily builders as much as they are maintainers. And they're very good at what they do maintaining those organizations. But, you know, even today, Fiserv has strategic investments all over the place. And it's because to really put together a great product or a new product or something, something really cool, you need a nimble team to do that. Um, and so over the course of my years, I had the opportunity to work with a lot of these people in the space, a lot of these startups. And the key differentiator was passion, right? They weren't necessarily smarter than you or I. They put on their pants the same way. And, you know, confidence and my confidence today, that's a recurring battle. Um, I think that's true for a lot of business owners. Um, at what point do you look in the mirror and say, you know what, I got it. Um, it's important to celebrate your successes. Um, but you know, that's a little secret on the inside. You never necessarily, even if the world says, well, good job, you're doing great. You always kind of question yourself. And it's something that I think everyone struggles with. Um, but when realizing, you know, that these people on the outside, hey, I have an idea and 
realizing that the world is actually full of capital chasing ideas. That was a concept that was difficult for me to grasp at first, because like I said, you know, my upbringing, I grew up in a small town. Uh, we had, you know, the Amish put the floors in my parents' house. Um, we lived off a garden um, until I really got out there and, and started hitting the skies and talking to people. You don't necessarily realize how much money is actually out there um, just looking for the next idea. And so, um, you know, 10 years sitting on the sidelines, um, watching other people live the dream. Um, I hit a point where I thought it's now or never, and there's a good chance that I will fail. Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to hurt a lot more knowing that I never tried. And so uh, that's what got me to where I am today. Um, that's what I continue to fight with every day. Um, and I try to get, you know, one inch closer to the goal every day. That's fabulous. And that is a big lesson for those uh, of you who are business owners who are watching this. Huge lesson, right, in exactly what you just said. So tell us a little bit more about your company. Yeah. So um, Receive is a venture capital backed uh, company just coming out of start uh, stealth mode. I'm very excited about it. Uh, we bill ourselves as the world's first earned revenue access company. Um, so what we do is we really play in the SMB space. Um, SMBs in particular have a lot of challenges right now, um, as I know a lot of probably viewers of this can attest to, but margins are tight, uh, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. It's something that is always top of mind or should be top of mind for a lot of small business owners. Um, if you look across the country on average, it's close to 50 or 60% of a small business's assets at any given time are tied up in their receivables. Mm -hmm. And so that puts them in a very precarious position. Uh, Receive was really founded to fix that. Um, we like small businesses, we love them, we primarily serve them. And so what we do is we will provide a small business owner with access to their revenue, to their sales um, upfront with no fees and no interest. It's completely free for the small business owner to use um, I think it's a slam dunk. I'm obviously a little biased, um, but I think it can be a game changer um, if we can get this up to scale to where it needs to be. I think we can move the needle for a lot of small businesses. Um, so how does it work? A uh, very simple application process takes 24 hours or less. Uh, we basically connect to two key pieces of data. So one, we need to know where your sales are coming from. So mm -hmm. uh, you'll connect either your point of sale or if you're an Etsy, Shopify, Amazon seller, we're already integrated to that. Um, and then you also go through and link via Plaid uh, your bank account. We do all of our underwriting strictly on cash flows, so we never check your credit. Uh, we don't charge anything for it, again, to the business owners. Um, and then if you have $10,000 in sales on a Friday night, uh, but I came in and I drank you out of... Uh, Miller Lite and you need to call Badger Liquor up, uh, you'll have that spending power immediately available via receive. You can then resupply. Uh, so really think it's a game changer. Um, we are seeing tremendous growth right now uh, and a lot of very positive reactions. Um, so uh, this comes back to the idea thing. Uh, I have a lot of bad ideas. One in 20 are a good idea. Uh, the only way to know is you have to test it. And uh, so uh, in the case of Receive, um, I, I think it was a positive hypothesis test. And I'm really excited uh, about where we go from here. Excellent. Uh, so tell us a story where someone pushed you or inspired you that you could do it, right? And what's, what was the impact that had on you? Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm in my mid-30s. And... Um, over the course of the years, you know, I've, I've had the chance to partner and work with a lot of a lot of these founders of startups. Uh, there was one in particular uh, founder of what is now a very successful fintech company, um, and he was he was right out of school, right? So he just got out of college, um, and I'm sitting with him, and I, I, I'm realizing the success that he's found in. Uh, funding his idea and getting it off the ground um, and realizing that, you know, I was the barrier the whole time. If you wait until the time is right or until you're 
better educated or until you do more research, uh, here's what happens. You never do it, right? Mm -hmm. um, right. And so he was he was a, a big push um, for me professionally to realize, you know what, this guy is 12 years my junior, doesn't have a lot of work experience. Uh, but again, he, he took an idea and he went out to market with it and um, and he found followers, right? And that's how, that's how you get it off the ground. And I realized that I had it in me. Uh, and at the end of the day, the only one who was gonna push me to do it was me. Um, so it was a yeah, great experience. And I, I owe a lot of that to him. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's, you know, it's so interesting because we, you know, it's not an alone thing. Sometimes people need inspiration. Sometimes people need accountability. Sometimes people need, um, you know, capital, that kind of thing. But it's never alone, right? It's never, we never do it alone. So, so what has been your biggest learning as a business owner? I would say that when you're in the middle of it, there's a, a not so good tendency to start chasing dollars and cents. And my biggest learning, I think, has been, look, profit is a byproduct, right, of a great product and of building loyal customers. Um, so I think my biggest learning is there's only so much time in a day. As business owners, we all know there's not enough time in a day. Um, your time is best spent on your product and on your customer experience. That's your value add as a business owner. Uh, that's your lane that you need to focus on. Uh, everything else, it'll happen. It'll come in time. Um, but I, I think that's probably key. You know, uh, Don't look at nickels and dimes. Focus on the product and focus on really giving your customers a remarkable experience. That's the North Star. All right. That's well. That that's great insight, because um, business ownership is 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 um, tough. It's exciting. It's all the emotions wrapped in, right? So that's one of the reasons why we do the interviews is so because each business owner brings a different perspective, and so that all of the business owners listening to this know that they're not alone, right? So so what has been your biggest challenge during the years, and who was it? Uh, or who was or is a fellow business owner or colleague who helped you through it? I think my biggest challenge still to this day, you know, some people won't believe it, but it's it's believing in myself. Um, I brought that up in, in the earlier question, but, um, you know, I think, I think you can point to a lot of really successful people. And if you're fortunate enough to get a couple of minutes to have a candid conversation with them, uh, you realize nobody's really got it entirely figured out. And I like what you said, Jackie, that, you know, you don't build this alone. Um, that's the truth. And when you see a successful organization, that didn't all fall on one individual, right? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you just have to have a little faith and uh, know that you're under the right thing and you have to see the journey through. Um, I think to your second question, you know, I had a president at a former employer of mine, very experienced guy, um, and was never quite sure why he believed in me, right? Um, but knowing that somebody else out there uh, having 30 years under their belt um, and having met all sorts of people everywhere, um, knowing that he saw something there, it, it definitely helped me kind of dig in and say, what is that? What's my, what is my value? And uh, and then I have to convince myself of it, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, I, you are the first interview I've done that that has said that that's that has said when I was young, somebody saw something in me, right? Which is really important, and that that also allows for the confidence because whatever they saw, you got it, right? Um, so, but if you had to pick three people in your business journey that you are most grateful for being there for your business growth, who are they? Well, I promise it's not a cop-out answer and I, I won't name them, but I would say my first three customers. Uh -huh. um, so when I was starting Federation Financial, the financial industry in general, right? You're asking people to trust you with their money. 
And Federation Financial, we, we work primarily on the payment side for businesses, other small businesses. And so when I'm knocking on a door and I'm walking in and I'm saying, trust me, right, with your livelihood, even though I have no accounts under my belt, those first three that actually believed in me and, uh, you know, took the steps and took the risk uh, to actually work with me, um, completely invaluable, right? And as those accounts grow and the referrals grow and um, that they were literally the, the foundation of the business and couldn't have done it without them. Um, I needed those first three people to take a chance. So yeah. I'm eternally grateful for them. And I hope they're still having a great experience with the service. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's really, that is really, you know what, you're right. It's those people that took a chance, right? So I, that is, that is, uh, that is really admirable that you have gone back to your roots and thought of them in terms of, of who you need to think. I think that's really important as well. So, you know, you've been, you've been doing these things. You've got to receive your new company. So what's the next big thing for you and your business? Like, let's say in the next one to three years. Yeah. So receive right now, we have a direct channel and we have an emerging partnership channel. Uh, the direct channel is great because we get a lot of insights into the day to day of these business owners. Um, we kind of refer to it as our lab. Right. Yeah. So we're kind of getting the, the bugs out. The biggest opportunity is obviously the, the partnership channels. Uh, we thought we had a great product. We put it out to market direct. We tested it. Now we know we have a great product. Um, so the opportunity and the, the challenge is going to be scaling it. Um, so we're bringing on right now, you know, partners of various flavors. These are folks that primarily have relationships with SMBs across the country already. Uh, for the partner, it's a revenue opportunity is incremental. So a lot of times it's, hey, you have this relationship. Let's give them something of value and you can actually recognize a new revenue channel as well. Um, so getting that scale though, and then being able to support that scale, and again, remaining laser focused on the customer experience, um, that's what keeps me up at night. You know, when we 10, 12, 15X the size of the company, um, are we still that cozy first name basis, right? Mm -hmm. With, and customer and are we still giving them the same white glove service right um, that's that's really the objective that's and that you know it sounds like it's all it's not not only a growth opportunity but it could be a challenge too right the, where you are you where you are because i think that's a great opportunity and you have and you have um you know imagine 10x right 15x 50x so what what other in besides that what is uh a big challenge you see as you scale? Um, I would say that the support um, right now, uh, we pride ourselves right on, on the personality that we provide. The, the problem is that model doesn't necessarily scale very well. Um, and so there's, there's going to be places that we need to look at automation. There's going to be places that we need to look at outsourcing. Um, and every time you make one of those difficult decisions, you risk uh, putting a dent in your value proposition. Mm -hmm. um, so it's always walking a fine line between scaling it to the point where it pencils well um, and scaling it to the point where you no longer have an awesome product. And so um, it, that's the challenge, I think, is understanding Ultimately, at the end of the day, a lot of people think, oh, growth is just great, growth for growth's sake. But at the end of the day, you got to ask yourself, I think, well, how big? How big at the end of the day, right? If if you're sitting back and you're retired and you say, I had a wonderful career, built a great company, um, what is the right size of that? And bigger isn't always better, right? We know that. Um, so I think, yeah, growth uh, and and the challenges that come with growth. I think that's that's really the heartburn that we're going to be feeling within the next year or two. Okay. Oh, yes. Yep. So what advice do you have for business owners who are trying to do it on their own? <laughs> well, 
<laughs> um, don't do it on your own right no so. i think i think jackie i think so i i've been there and this comes back to you know an earlier question but here's the thing um understand you know every minute of your day and then take a look at it and say what functions here don't make sense for me to take on and you know doing it all yourself that's that's great but here's the thing i'm not an accountant right i have you know i have uh, rudimentary i can do my own book work sure i can um but is that the value that i bring to my business no it's not the value that i bring to my business is the product right it's the customer experience and so understanding you know if almost if you put if you you took a took a, a look at your day and then actually itemized each of these and and say okay my time is worth you know fifteen hundred dollars an hour make make up something right i know obnoxious but whatever figure figure that out that's, and then, that's closer to accurate than you think right <laughs> it's it very well could be yes yeah. so you know if i'm if i'm tony and i cost fifteen hundred dollars an hour am i going to spend an hour uh, doing my own book work, right? When I know I could outsource it to, you know, John Smith, I, I wouldn't do that, right? Um, that can be said with a lot of things. And I have learned um, primarily through just networking with other business owners, uh, for those that haven't figured out how to take advantage yet of fractional help, they're, I think they're missing out. Um, it's a totally different world nowadays, right? Um, if you need marketing, you need, I mean, you name it, any, any function that a business could use, uh, you don't have to take it on yourself. Um, there's a lot of fractional opportunities out there. And a lot of times, uh, you know, give these folks a chance. Uh, that would be my, my big advice. Don't, don't try to do it all yourself. At the end of the day, your product and your customers are, are going to suffer uh, if you, you know, stray too far from what your value add is. Right. And I, I, hear very often, you know, uh, business owners doing things themselves. And I, I, what you said about that, I couldn't have hot, could not have been said better. Um, I, we talk, I talk about this a lot with my clients, you know, and you just articulated per perfectly why that's not a good idea to do everything yourself. And I love how you talked about fractional help or help from others, because, you know, you're right you are more valuable bringing in business or using your strengths and talents to grow the business than you are doing uh, maybe things that you're more comfortable with. Um, so I love that messaging so that you business owners out there who are listening, pay close attention to that piece of it, right? So, you know, Tony, it sounds like you have been really blessed with some incredible people who've helped you on your journey. What would you like to say to them? uh thanks for believing in me and the best is yet to come love the it job as a business owner and an entrepreneur is never done um <laughs> so if, if you have it in you yeah sit back and watch we're gonna we're gonna have fun <laughs> love it love it love it love it well tony it was a pleasure speaking with you thank you so much for being on the show absolute pleasure in this end thank you jackie